Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today we're checking out a 40 foot 1947 Huckin Sportsman. This one's new to the market at $120,000 and lying in Jacksonville, Florida. And what's really spectacular is, despite being 75 years old, she's only had two owners since new. I had a great time meeting with the owner and he was talking about how this one travels from Cape Cod to Florida and back every year and what's approximately a two and a half thousand mile round trip. She's proved to be a very capable boat, both in terms of cruising and also for offshore fishing. I love the clear deck space that's on this one for when you're making your way up to the bow. And she does actually come fully equipped with a flybridge, it's just it's not currently installed. This was removed to help improve the bridge clearance, but also the boat was at one point in undercover storage that had height restrictions. But the owner has everything you need to put this back to being a flybridge cruiser and he can help build that back up for you. And this one's benefited from major upgrades throughout the years, including having the hull reskinned with fiberglass cloth with epoxy resin, and this is coated with Alexio. And just in general, anytime anything needed repaired, it was carried out regardless of cost, so that the boat remains ship shape and ready to go again. And as I pan round, you can see this one's got a length overall of 40 feet and she's got a beam of 12 feet 2 inches. And that beam just gives you so much space and stability, whether you're underway or tied up at the dock. And as I make my way astern, you'll see again all the hand holders in place, the wide deck, and just the ease of movement that you have on board, whether you're fishing or docking. And then that eventually leads back to the aft cockpit. That's where this one really comes into its own. This one still holds records from swordfish tournaments and even comes complete with the bamboo outriggers from the Hemingway fishing days. So this one's got the original fighting chairs and in the aft full width seat, that's actually got a Manel fish box underneath. You'll notice there's a number of storage compartments on the side of the hull. There's the rod holders on the deck. And I was impressed not only with the amount of space you have, but how there's pretty much nothing to get your fishing rod and line tangled in. You don't have a bunch of handrails and grab rails or any fixtures like that where it could become an issue when you're offshore fishing. You also have clear passage through to the helm so it's easy for the skipper to keep an eye on things over the stern and easy for you to communicate while you're fishing what you want them to do and where you want the boat to go etc. And despite being 75 years old, those fighting chairs have got plenty of fight left in them. Not only are they very functional, but I actually liked how comfortable they were as well. And then as we go to make our way into the helm, this has got eyes and glass canopy covers that you can be rolled up or removed. The wheel and engine controls is in a central location, making it much easier to dock the boat. It also helps with the fishing as well, regardless of what side you're fishing or docking to. And in terms of navigation equipment, this one's well equipped for the two and a half thousand mile trip that the owner does. This includes AIS, you've got an EPIRB, there's two VHF radios, there's a Raymarine 125 GPS, as well as a Raymarine radar, this is an RL70C, it's got a four kilowatt dome. The owner's also got navigation equipment running on his laptop. And we also have additional equipment such as the ST40 Raymarine wind speed direction and an autopilot as well. And the helm's located right above the engines. I'll show you the engines in a few moments. But you've got a pair of twin 8.2 liter V8 Detroit diesel engines. They've got approximately 4,800 hours on the clock. At displacement speeds, we're getting around 450 mile range. And when you're cruising at around 17 knots, you're getting somewhere in the region of 225 mile. And to port, we do have a companion seat which also doubles up as a navigation station. A folding collapsible setup for when it's not in use. And then it's on the port hand side that we lead in to the lower accommodation. And the first impression I got when I went in here was I was impressed with the headroom. There's quite a few times I've been on the classic boats where they don't always offer the same headroom, but I'm six foot two and I had no issues in this one. I also like the amount of natural light you can get through all those wraparound windows. And the seating that we have in the saloon, those are full length, so that this actually can double up as being extra berth. And I like the fact that there's a TV mounted in the bulkhead that is actually hooked up to the navigation equipment, so you can keep an eye on things while you're down here. 
There's a number of storage options in here, including behind the seats and underneath the seats. And since the owner does do as much cruising in this one, as well as spending time living aboard, there's a freezer that's been installed at the forward section of the saloon. And he's put a little table over the top that he's doubled up as an additional navigation station. I also like the use of some of the classic light fixtures and switches throughout, and it helps keep that boat in character for its age. But you do have more modern upgrades, including the stereo system and air conditioning throughout. And you'll see again we've got more storage options on the port hand side as well. And there is a small dining table that's also included. This has been moved off to the side for ease of access, but it can be put in the middle of the saloon whenever it's getting used as well. And underneath the saloon seats, you can see we've got storage drawers. And I like the fact that everything closes with a purpose. It doesn't feel like anything's going to pop open while the boat's underway, especially if you're offshore. And as we move further forward, this is where you're going to find the galley on board. And this one's got a countertop that forms into a sink. And this was designed so that it can be used for cleaning sizable fish. You also have both a fridge and a freezer. There's a new microwave that's been recently installed. And there's a two burner stove. And that stove can run off of either alcohol or electric. And again, I was impressed with the headroom down here. Especially this far forward, normally you start to have it taper off, but I had no problem standing up at the galley. And I liked how secure everything was for like the cups and the plates and things like that. It's got that lip effect, so that nothing can slide out when the boat's underway. And again, for liveaboard cruising, storage is always a valuable commodity. And this one's actually got a pantry built into it on the opposite side. So whether you're cruising or fishing, you don't have that same urgency to run back into port to resupply stocks. And again, notice things like the shine off of the woodwork. This is a boat that's been maintained on a regular basis by its current owner. He's owned this boat for over 20 years and he knows the boat inside and out. And to move forward again, next up is the heads compartment. This has got the original porcelain sink and fittings. But she does have a more modern, it's a model 506 vacuum flush head and this is connected to a holding tank. And speaking of the tanks, this one's got a fuel capacity of 241 gallons, fresh water capacity of 72 gallons and a holding tank capacity of 18 gallons. And I like the fact there's as much storage in here for all your toiletries and personal belongings. There's also an opening hatch overhead and that gives not only natural light but it gives you additional ventilation as well. And then if you make your way forward again, on the bow you'll find the main cabin. This has got two V berths, and you see the storage drawers underneath either berth. I love the way they've got the fishing rods all stored up in here, mounted onto the coach roof. And the interior has been coated with Matterhorn white Alex seal. It's also got a varnished mahogany trim. And as part of the continuous upgrade, it's got new stainless steel port lights with screens that were replaced in 2022. And those storage drawers that's underneath the bunks, those are very deep drawers, but again, I like the fact that they're not going to pop open while the boat's underway. You've got like a little step built into the forward section, especially if you want to access the anchor locker. And technically there's a third berth in here on the starboard side, but this has traditionally been used more for storage equipment, especially for all the offshore fishing gear that you might have. I also like that you've got a hatch overhead, again not only for light but ventilation, but you can also use this as an emergency escape, which hopefully you never need to use. And if we go back to the wheelhouse, I can show you those engines. These are tier 1 Detroit diesels, and in true Detroit fashion, if it's leaking oil, it means it's got oil in it. The owner told us that in displacement mode, these will run for between 24 and 36 hours without needing to add any oil. At around 1300 RPM, she's getting about 8.5 knots, which is 2.5 mile per gallon. And when time's not crucial, he even shuts down and runs on one engine at a time at 1500 RPM and getting around 7.5 knots, getting 4 mile to the gallon. If you're willing to keep an eye on the oil, coolant, and the belts, and gauges, these engines have got plenty of life left in them. And the owner's in no hurry to upgrade the engines. However, if you're looking at performance cruising and you're looking at low maintenance cruising, you might want to consider upgrading these engines in the near future. I'd like to thank Huckins again for allowing me the opportunity to come on here 
and take a look at this one and share it with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. You can leave a comment down below. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, if you can please do so, it really does make a difference. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.